The bustling playground echoed with laughter and joy, but Sarah's laughter was missing. Five-year-old Sarah vanished that sunny afternoon, leaving behind only her twin sister, Emma, bewildered and alone. For 22 years, the mystery haunted Emma, a shadow over every playground visit, a question mark on every sunny day. Then, something led Emma to uncover a truth that would forever change their lives. Arriving at work, Emma greeted one of her colleagues kindly, but to her surprise, she got a cold smile in return. Alana, who Emma had always gotten along with, suddenly acted differently toward her, and she didn't understand why. After work, she couldn't help but ask Alana what was up. Oh, so now you know me again, Alana snapped, confusing Emma. What do you mean, Emma asked? She had no idea what Alana was talking about. The last time they had spoken to each other was last Friday when Alana told her about the fun weekend she was about to have. Don't act stupid. I saw you at the mall, and you totally ignored me. You embarrassed me in front of my boyfriend, Em. Emma was dumbfounded she hadn't been to the mall this weekend. Suddenly, her stomach dropped and Alana saw her face turning pale. I have to go, Emma abruptly said, and she hurried to her bicycle. She heard Alana annoyingly sighing, and she could just imagine the eye roll she did at Emma walking away, but this was something she couldn't ignore. Emma's heart raced when she arrived home, and not because she biked fast. I mean, yes, she biked faster than she ever did before, but she had waited for this moment for 22 years. When she got home, she searched through all the drawers in her house, turning over every piece of paper she found. Aha, she shouted, holding up a crumpled note with a phone number on it. It was the number Officer Terrence had given her when the case of her missing twin sister ran cold. His words, call me when she ever contacts you, had haunted her for the last 21 years. It had given her hope that she would, in fact, reach out someday, even though that was never a given. But now, it seemed like Sarah was back. Hello, Officer Terrence, Emma cautiously asked when a male voice picked up the phone. It stayed quiet for a while, but then he spoke. Emma, he said, his voice almost sounding sad. It's been a long time since we spoke, but I recognized your voice immediately. Emma smiled. Officer Terrence's voice sounded warm and familiar, exactly what she needed right now. Have you spoken to her? He asked curiously. Emma explained what had happened with her colleague Alana, and Officer Terrence seemed surprised. Emma, he began, and as he said her name, Emma suddenly felt a knot form in her stomach. I'm sorry, but I'm terribly ill. I can't physically help you track down your sister anymore, Emma sighed. She had feared something like this as it had been such a long time. But Officer Owen still works at the station. You can go to him with this information, Terrence added. A shiver ran down Emma's spine, hearing that name again. She had never liked Officer Owens as a little girl. He discarded everything she did to help, never listening to her, even if she told him real information about that day on the playground. Sure, thanks, she said, not worrying about sounding disappointed. They hung up the phone, and Emma sat down on her bed, staring into space. Why wasn't her sister contacting her if she had really returned? Emma had to find out more, and she sure as hell didn't want Officer Owen's help. So, she headed to the mall on her own. She texted her colleague, Ilana, I know this is all a bit odd, but where did you see me at the mall the other day? I'll explain everything later. She really hoped she could retrace her sister's steps somehow. As she walked around the fountain, looking at every woman her age, her phone buzzed. By the Fila store, Ilana replied, Emma wandered the mall, repeatedly entering and exiting the Fila store, hesitant to request security footage. She lingered by the entrance, biting her lip, unsure of what to say. The clerks eyed her curiously, but she couldn't bring herself to ask. Her mind raced with thoughts of Sarah. What if it really was her, she wondered, glancing around nervously, hoping for a glimpse of her twin. She meandered through various mall sections, her eyes scanning for any sign of her twin, Sarah. Every face seemed familiar yet foreign. She passed by shops, peeking in windows, her heart pounding with anticipation. Where are you? Sarah, she whispered under her breath. The noise of the mall buzzed around her, but Emma felt alone in her desperate search. After a fruitless search, Emma decided to leave, feeling disheartened by the lack of leads. 
Her steps felt heavier as she walked towards the exit, her mind clouded with doubt. Maybe it was just a coincidence, she thought, sighing deeply. She glanced back one last time, hoping for a miracle, but saw nothing out of the ordinary. As she approached her car, a van suddenly pulled up beside her, causing her to tense up. The door slid open and Emma's heart raced. What now, she thought, stepping back cautiously. She glanced around, but the parking lot was eerily empty. The van's engine hummed ominously and Emma's instinct screamed at her to run, but she felt rooted to the spot. A man grabbed Emma, yanking her into the van as he yelled angrily. What took you so long, she struggled against his grip, panic surging through her veins. Let go of me, she screamed, but his hold was strong. The van door slammed shut behind them, plunging her into darkness. Emma's mind raced, fear overtaking her as the van sped off. The older, irate man called Emma Sarah, demanding to know why she took so long. We've been waiting for hours, he growled, glaring at her. Emma's mind raced. They think I'm Sarah, she realized, her heart pounding. She kept her eyes down, hoping he wouldn't notice her confusion. Answer me, the man snapped, but Emma stayed silent, fear tightening her throat. Realizing they mistook her for her twin, Emma kept silent, hoping they wouldn't discover the truth. She nodded slightly, trying to avoid eye contact. Where's the package, the man demanded. Emma's pulse quickened, but she forced herself to stay calm. Maybe I can figure this out, she thought, praying they wouldn't see through her act. The van rattled as it sped through the city streets. As the van sped away, Emma noticed Sarah standing outside, eyes wide in shock. Her heart skipped a beat. Sarah, she wanted to scream, but she bit her tongue. The image of her twin burned into her mind, fueling her determination. She's alive, Emma thought, tears welling up. But the van kept moving, and Sarah's figure quickly disappeared from view. Sarah's stunned expression made Emma's heart sink as the van carried her further away. The reality of the situation hit her hard. This is really happening, she thought, fighting back tears. The men in the van were engrossed in their conversation, giving her a moment to gather her thoughts. She knew she had to stay strong for her and Sarah's sake. Emma tried to stay calm, realizing the danger she was in if they learned her identity. She took deep breaths, focusing on the rhythm of the road beneath the van. I have to think, she told herself, scanning the van for any clues. The men's voices were a low murmur, but she caught snippets of their plans. Emma knew she had to stay one step ahead. Emma remained silent, fearing her voice would reveal she wasn't Sarah. The men glanced at her occasionally, but she kept her head down, avoiding their eyes. Stay calm, she repeated to herself, her heart racing. The van's engine roared, and Emma clung to the hope that she could find a way out. Just play along, she thought, stealing herself for whatever came next. She watched the men converse, their frustration evident, particularly from the angry man. His gestures were sharp, his voice low but intense. Emma strained to hear their words catching bits and pieces. She better have it one man muttered. The angry man's eyes darted towards her, filled with annoyance. Emma's pulse quickened, knowing she had to stay alert and learn as much as she could. The man hissed at her, you know we're going to be very late now, and that's on you, Emma nodded slightly, trying to look apologetic. His glare burned into her, but she kept her composure. Just keep quiet, she reminded herself. The tension in the van was palpable, and Emma knew any wrong move could be disastrous. She had to play her part perfectly. Emma listened closely, learning as much as she could about the men who had taken her. They spoke in hushed tones, discussing plans in places she didn't recognize. She picked up names and bits of their conversation, piecing together their intentions. They think I have something important, she realized, filing away every detail. Information was her only weapon now, and she intended to use it. Her mind raced with possible escape plans as the van continued its journey. She glanced at the doors, the windows, and the men's positions, calculating her chances. Maybe when they stopped, she thought, formulating a plan. The van jolted over a bump, snapping her back to the present. Emma knew she had to be ready. Her escape could come at any moment. Emma studied the angry man, 
feeling a nagging sense of familiarity but unable to place him. His harsh features and intense glare triggered something in her memory. Do I know him, she wondered, trying to recall. The man caught her staring and scowled, making Emma quickly look away. She racked her brain, desperate to figure out where she had seen him before. She overheard names the angry man was Benny, the driver was Liam, and the quiet man was Zion. Their conversation grew louder, giving Emma more clues. Benny, we need to move faster, Liam said. Zion nodded, his eyes flickering towards Emma. She memorized their names, knowing any detail could be crucial. Stay focused, she reminded herself, her mind racing with possibilities. Benny's irritation grew as Emma continued to ignore his questions, heightening the tension. Why won't you answer me, he snapped, his patience wearing thin. Emma stayed silent, her heart pounding. She could feel the anger radiating from him, making the air thick with tension. The other men exchanged worried glances, sensing Benny's growing frustration. Emma knew she had to be careful. Benny demanded answers, growing increasingly annoyed at Emma's silence. I'm talking to you, he shouted, leaning closer. Emma shrank back, trying to maintain her calm facade. Think, Emma, think she urged herself, searching for a way to diffuse the situation. The van's confined space made everything feel more intense, and she could see the anger in Benny's eyes. Her silence was infuriating him. Emma silently prayed that Sarah had already gone to the police with details of the kidnapping. Please, Sarah, do something she thought desperately. The van's steady rumble and the men's harsh voices filled her ears. She kept her head down, hoping that help was on the way. I need to stay strong, she reminded herself, her heart pounding with anxiety and hope. Benny's expression suddenly shifted to shock as he said, you're not Sarah, are you? His eyes widened and he took a step back, scrutinizing her face more closely. Emma's breath caught in her throat. What now, she wondered, trying to keep her expression neutral. The van seemed to grow quieter, the tension rising as Benny's words hung in the air. Emma's heart pounded as she realized Benny might have figured out the truth. Her mind raced with possible responses, but she couldn't find any words. Benny's piercing gaze made her feel exposed. Stay calm, she told herself, but her fear was hard to hide. The other men noticed the change in Benny's demeanor, and their curiosity turned to concern. She frantically looked for a way out, but Zion blocked the van's door, and they were on the highway. Panic surged through her as she assessed her limited options. No escape now, she thought, her heart sinking. The van's speed made any attempt to flee even more dangerous. Emma felt trapped, her chances of getting out shrinking by the second. Benny's serious tone confirmed her fears, and she prepared for the worst. Where is Sarah, he demanded, his voice low and threatening. Emma swallowed hard, her mind racing. Think, think, she urged herself, but her thoughts were a jumbled mess. The men leaned in, their faces tense with anticipation. Emma braced herself, knowing this confrontation was unavoidable. Emma's fear was evident, but Benny's expression was hard to read, he seemed scared. His eyes darted between her and the other men, uncertainty clouding his face. What's going on, Emma wondered, her heart racing. Benny's tension was palpable, adding to her anxiety. She could see he was as confused as she was, and that uncertainty was frightening. Benny moved closer, gently tucking Emma's hair behind her ear, asking. Emma, his tone was softer now, almost pleading. Emma flinched at his touch, her mind reeling. Why is he being gentle, she thought, trying to make sense of his sudden change. Benny's eyes searched hers, looking for something familiar. Emma's heart pounded, her fear mixed with confusion. Benny's emotional state made Emma uneasy, unsure of his intentions. His face flickered between anger and sadness, creating an unpredictable atmosphere. Why is he so emotional, Emma wondered, her unease growing. Benny's shifting moods kept her on edge, unsure of what he might do next. The tension in the van was suffocating, and Emma felt trapped in a whirlwind of emotions. The tension in the van grew as Emma remained silent, unsure of her next move. Benny's frustration was palpable, his eyes boring into hers. The other men exchanged nervous glances, sensing the escalating situation. 
Emma felt the pressure mounting, her options dwindling. Think fast, she told herself, but her mind was blank. The air was thick with anticipation, each second stretching into eternity. Benny suddenly yelled at Liam, telling him they had to turn around ASAP. We don't have time, he barked, his voice frantic. Liam's eyes widened, but he obeyed, spinning the van around with a sharp turn. Emma clutched her seat, trying to steady herself. What's happening, she wondered, her fear mounting. The van picked up speed, racing back the way they came. The van sped back toward town, increasing Emma's fear for her sister's safety. Her mind raced with possibilities, each one worse than the last. What if they're after Sarah, she thought, her heart pounding. The urgency in Benny's actions suggested something serious. Emma's worry for her twin intensified, her thoughts swirling as the van hurtled down the road. The urgency in Benny's actions suggested something more was at stake. He barked orders at Liam and Zion, his voice tinged with desperation. We can't let them get away, he shouted, his determination clear. Emma's mind whirled with questions. Who are they chasing? What's so important, she wondered. The tension in the van was palpable, everyone on edge as they raced against time. Police sirens blared behind the van and red and blue lights flashed, signaling a chase. Emma's heart skipped a beat. The police, she thought, hope surging through her. But the men in the van panicked, their eyes wide with fear. Don't stop, Benny yelled at Liam. The sirens grew louder, the flashing lights closer as the chase intensified. Liam refused to stop, initiating a high-speed chase through busy streets. The van swerved and dodged, narrowly avoiding other vehicles. Emma clung to her seat, the chaotic motion making her dizzy. This is insane, she thought, her fear reaching new heights. The sound of screeching tires and blaring horns filled the air, the police hot on their tail. Emma clung to her seat as the van ran red lights and narrowly avoided collisions. Her knuckles turned white from gripping the edge so tightly. The van swerved left and right, the world outside a blur of chaos. This can't be happening, she thought, her heart racing. Every sharp turn and near miss made her stomach churn with fear. More police cars joined the pursuit and helicopters buzzed overhead. The noise was deafening, sirens blaring from all directions. Emma's head spun, the overwhelming sound adding to her panic. They're closing in, she realized, glancing at Benny's tense face. The chaotic scene heightened Emma's anxiety, fearing the inevitable crash or arrest. Her breaths came in short gasps, the fear almost paralyzing. She glanced around the van, seeing the men's equally frightened faces. What will happen to us, she wondered, the uncertainty gnawing at her. The van's wild movements made her feel like she was on the edge of a cliff. Benny sat next to Emma, fear evident on his face as he began to speak. His voice was shaky, eyes darting nervously. Em, he started, struggling to find the right words. Emma turned to him, her heart pounding even harder. The fear in his eyes mirrored her own, creating a strange connection. What is he going to say, she wondered. E.M., you have to know we never hurt your sister, Benny said, trying to clear the air. His tone was urgent, almost pleading. Emma's mind raced, trying to process his words. Then why all this she wanted to scream, but stayed silent, her eyes locked on his. Benny's expression was a mix of desperation and sincerity, adding to her confusion. Emma's eyes filled with tears from the overwhelming stress and emotion. She blinked rapidly, trying to clear her vision. The chaotic chase, Benny's revelation, everything was too much. Stay strong, she told herself, but the tears kept coming. The fear, confusion, and exhaustion mixed together, making it hard to think clearly. Her heart ached with worry for Sarah and herself. As Benny spoke, Emma noticed something familiar about him that she hadn't seen before. His mannerisms, the way he spoke, sparked a distant memory. Why do I feel like I know him, she wondered, her tears momentarily forgotten. She studied his face more closely, trying to place where she had seen those features. Her mind raced, connecting the dots. The realization of Benny's identity hit her, causing a wave of confusion and emotion. No, it can't be, she thought, her eyes widening in shock. Memories from her childhood flashed before her, pieces of a puzzle falling into place. The weight of the revelation left her breathless, her mind struggling to process what it all meant. Benny, she whispered, 
Emma recognized Benny's eyes and nose, recalling a baby picture from years ago. The similarity was undeniable, the connection too strong to ignore. I remember now, she thought, her heart pounding. The features she had always known from a photograph suddenly came to life before her. This changes everything she realized, the truth sinking in deeper.